Well, on now uh, to the quirks of the high-tech lifestyle. They're easy fodder for humor, and the new HBO series Silicon Valley, premiering Sunday, serves up a parody of it. Series co-creator Mike Judge has come up with a collection of awkward, geeky characters who think they've developed the next big app. Here's a clip from Silicon Valley. Okay, here it is. Bit soup. It's like alphabet soup, but it's ones and zeros instead of the letters. Because <laughs> it's binary. You know, binary is just ones and zeros. Yeah, I know so. what binary is. Jesus Christ, I memorized the hexadecimal times tables when I was 14 writing machine code. Okay? Ask me what 9 times F is. It's 75. I do not need you telling me what binary is, just like I don't need you thinking about soup or taking pictures of it. I need you thinking about apps, software, websites. This is Silicon Valley, all right? But underlying the humor are some serious issues for local residents. Joining me now for a look at the funny and not so funny aspects of Silicon Valley culture are... Arthi Shahani, a KQED news contributor, and Steve Goldblum, host of Everything But the News from PBS Digital Studios. And uh, Arthi, I just want to ask you, first of all, why do you think there's so much public fascination with the culture of Silicon Valley? I mean, it, it, let's take a big structural issue into account, okay, which is that everyone has smartphones, and on your smartphone, you've got Facebook, you've got Twitter, you've got all these apps that are made in a place. That, pl that place is here. So I think that's one thing, is that we see these companies, we think of the place, and the other thing is money, okay? When we think about America, the story about America is decline. It's the 99%, it's losing wealth. Where is there a lot of wealth in high tech? This is the land of billionaires. And so I think that that has people put their eyes here. You know, I think if you don't live in San Francisco, you're not used to it. But when you come here, you see there's young people and you go to startups and you go to coffee shops and they're actually not coffee shops, they're incubators and accelerators that are posing as coffee shops. I was joking with a friend that I think startups are the new law school. People that used to go to law school and just kind of hang out because they, they wanted to be there, they go to, now they create their own startup and they have a few, everybody has a startup in them. And they're yeah. going to change the world that way. Exactly, yes. yeah. <laughs> oh, well, Steve, you uh, yourself spend a lot of time poking mm -hmm. fun at Silicon Valley. Um, uh, you're the creator of Everything But The News. This is a, a web-only spinoff mm -hmm. of a PBS NewsHour. And, and in it, you play a cub reporter covering the tech beat. You're kind of fumbling, a little clumsy, but you get... <laughs> what are you trying to say? Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, you're great. Right, thanks. Um, but uh, I'll ask you more about your series in a minute. But first, let's take a look yeah. at a clip from a okay. segment you did on the rideshare service Uber. Hey, Travis. How are you doing? Hey. Good to meet you. Thanks for doing this. Yes, Here we go. This is Folks, not bad. How are you doing, buddy? Close. We can really hug it out. Come on. We're going to hug it out. Hi. So where do you want to drive, Clovis? Close. We're driving where you want to go. Yeah. Who, whose idea was this? Mm. My co-founder and I were in Paris, and he's like, man, I just want to push a button and get a ride. I mean, he looks like someone and sounds like someone who came out of central casting for a show about Silicon Valley. The hair, the flip-flops, the confident attitude. I'm changing the world. <laughs> right. Well, we got lucky with him. Actually, he was the first one we got. So after he agreed to do it, everybody else would, do, would did it because he did it. Uh, an influence for us for the show was a George Packer article that ran in The New Yorker on the culture of Silicon Valley. And a lot of it was that, you know, these are apps designed by and for 20-somethings with a lot of cash to burn. Mm. And they aren't necessarily sa saving the world, but they're, how do I get the salad on my phone ordered to me in the car so I can go to the club and do this thing? And these aren't real problems. These are problems for a certain group of people that have all flooded into San Francisco and, uh, you know. And, and this raised the, the larger issue, you know, a lot of this parody is rooted in, in more serious issues that affect a lot of people and a lot of bigger questions now being raised about the current tech culture. For example, what just, you just mentioned, all the fun apps. And, you know, Arthi, how much of the innovation um, are, are about things that will be truly transformative in the long term? And how much of it is just, hey, a cool app that's trendy today, but not so hot maybe a year or two from I mean, now. I think there's a general consensus that most of what gets made is fluff and doesn't survive and dies out in the app store before it's ever known and some of it might be that unicorn that you know meant someone over a billion dollars but you know there are two things that, I, that really contrast one is for example that app secret right that's a you know blip now it's actually going down in usership it seems but that's the app where you can basically gossip without having to say who you are but you can kind of see which friends unnamed are also gossiping so it's kind of like this app that that brings out the worst in human communication which is let me 
you know, spew yeah. out some gossip without personal responsibility for it. And that's, you know, like a startup kind of thing. On the other hand, you also have companies like Google Glass, you know, very, very well respected, huge global enterprises, uh, Google having Glass out. And Glass is, I think, like sort of, either a really awesome innovation with only a few ounces of a computer on your nose, mm -hmm. on your eyeglasses, or it's just a specious thing that no one needs and will hopefully die out soon. And I think that that's like the bizarre thing that maybe gives fodder for Silicon Valley is when you look at what we're creating, we don't know if it's idiotic or genius. And, and it is, Google Glass is interesting because it is sort of symbolic of this, um, this backlash now against tech, uh, that, that it represents all the haves and, um, and the widening income gap, mm -hmm. separating the haves from the have-nots. Are you seeing a lot out there? Because you're covering this, right. you're, you're poking fun at it, but you're seeing a lot of this. It's absolutely, talking to our, people show is, in it. our show is art imitating life. One of the scenes we joke with the producer, we beg for more money for our public media budget because we're paying 2,000 a month for a single bedroom apartment that we have to share because everybody can now afford, if it's a renter's market, they can afford to pay triple the amount. Yeah. That twin bed. We were forced to push the beds together, and uh, you know we had fun with that, joking around with our producer. But, anyways, it, you know that that's true, and the other potent symbols of the income disparity in the city. When you see the Google bus plowing down the street, or you mm -hmm. see the person wearing the Google glasses, most people aren't on those buses. Most people can't wear those glasses, so it really does underline that divide. And another issue that's causing some resentment is the whole issue of ageism. It's sort of the unspoken um, secret, or maybe not so secret, if you live and work in Silicon Valley, that a lot of these um, companies, the startups especially, are started by young people. And they have said things in, things in surveys, things like, it's really weird to have someone, uh, you know, my parents' age working for me. I don't, I don't, that's not someone I want to hire. I do worry about some of the coverage, though, in that, for example, there's like, you know, the, the, I think a couple of Sundays ago in the Times Magazine, an article about, you know, like the kids making apps and how they don't talk to mentors and whatever, you know, whatnot. And I have to say, I've covered a fair, among, a fair number of millennials with startups that they're not doing apps that want you to click and they're relying on mobile advertising. For example, some very hardcore cybersecurity startups that are dealing with some pretty, you know, difficult questions about credit card protection and fraud and security and things like that. So, you know, obviously ageism is an issue that people feel, but just in general, how homogeneously we talk about the Valley. I mean, we're talking about one of the most global places in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have never met so many Indians in my entire life, and mm -hmm. I'm from New York, but we don't see that here because we talk about bromance and programmer culture, and we forget who else is in the room. Well, there's certainly a lot of material here and fodder for the new series, Silicon Valley. We'll see uh, what the public reaction is come Sunday. Thank you both for being here, Steve Goldblum and Arthi Shahani. Thank you. Thanks.